Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today's video is going to be month two weight loss results and I cannot wait to share my results with you but also share with you guys why I was so successful. So a couple of housekeeping before we get into this video. If you guys are new here, please subscribe. Click the notification bell so you're always notified of every single upload. Make sure you like this, like this video if you liked it. Make sure you share this video as well. Leave me a comment down below in, in the comment section. And I also am offering a channel membership. It's right next to the subscribe button right below this video. It'll say join. There's a little join button and you can join and then it'll pull up the perks and what you will be getting for the channel membership. So I'm offering that now as well. So if you guys are interested, eventually I'm going to add another tier, which will be a live stream. But for now, we just have the two tiers. So let's go ahead and get into this video and I'll share with you guys how much I lost. And the most important of the thing of this video is why I was so successful this month. So let's get into it. All right, so I took some notes throughout the month because I wanted to make sure that I pinpointed certain things I did this month that allowed me to be successful. So if you see me looking down at my phone, that's what's going on. I weighed in at 300.6. I am just close. <laughs> this freaking close but i lost a total i'm this close i let me finish my sentence i'm this close to being out of the 300s and into the 290s i lost a total of 6.6 .6 pounds in month two and i am down a total of 19.4 pounds in two months and an overall of 30.4 pounds from my highest which was 331 pounds which was several years ago and I am incredibly proud of that. So let's go ahead and go into why I was so successful in February with my weight loss journey. I focused on protein. And let me also add this. I don't have this in my notes, but protein and fiber are like a power, power combo. I have heard this so many times being repeated from weight loss coaches on the internet to people who have tried to lose weight and saying that is like this magic combo of being able to keep you feeling full and satiated so that you're eating less. Most days this month, I was at 140 or more grams of protein a day. That really helped me to be able to stay satiated throughout the day. If you guys want me to do a specific, cause I know protein can be really hard to get in. So if you guys want me to do a, what I eat in a day, focusing on protein, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make sure to film that for you. So I feel that was really crucial in my success for this month. I stopped telling myself that I was missing out if I wasn't eating something that someone else was. In particular, one day this month, we went to this new dessert place in town and I didn't get anything. I'm not gonna lie. When I was there sitting there, I felt like I felt like I was missing out. I really did. However, after talking to my kids and just realizing the accomplishment of what it was to be able to say no to something I really wanted and how good that felt, I was like, it wasn't the end of the world. And my kids told me, they were like, really, you didn't miss out on anything. And I think like a lot of times, especially in the past with weight loss journeys, I would go, my parents would come or you'd have an event where there's just food everywhere. And if you're not partaking, you feel like you're like, I would feel like I was missing out. So I would feel like I would have to, instead of hurting people's feelings or instead of you just not being feeling like I couldn't say no to the food that was being presented. It was like, ugh, like I felt like I was missing out or I felt like I couldn't say no. And this month I really exercised self-control and I also exercised the power of saying no to myself and other people. Do you want this? No, I'm good. Do you want this? No, I'm good. And then also being like, okay, we're going to go out to eat these specific days Picking and choosing where you're going to eat, but also what you're going to eat and sticking to what I said I was going to eat. Now, some people will say, oh, this is so toxic. You are denying yourself of food you love. I'm going to be real with myself and I'm being real with myself. I will never be able to eat the way that I used to eat. The way that I eat that got me to 300 pounds or to over 300 pounds, I will never be able to eat like that 
ever again in my life if I want to be successful on a weight loss journey and also in keeping it off. Does that mean I can't have ice cream, chips, cake, all that stuff? No, it does not. It just means that I'm going to have to make better choices and I'm not gonna be able to treat every occasion that comes along like it's a special occasion because there, there were too many special occasions that were adding up. I put the focus and I'm also seeing, in, seeing a nutritionist and we talked about this at length because I was very nervous about my parents coming and me being introduced or around foods that I had not been around for a month and a half. So I was very worried that I wasn't going to be able to stay on track. And I was very worried that even though I had this plan that I was going to go off and just be like, you know what, F it. I'm going to order this and this and this and this and this and this. So what we talked about was instead of putting the focus on feeling like you can't have something, put the focus on because when I eat that food, I don't feel good. And when I don't feel good, I know what happens after that. It sends me into this tailspin. It's harder for me to bounce back. And right now I want to practice my self-control in saying no. And that's exactly what I did. And I was very, very, very successful with that. So eventually we'll get to the point where it's like, okay, we can order this and we can know and we trust ourselves enough and we're gonna exercise enough self-control that we're gonna stop when we're full and we're gonna pack it up and let it and pack it up and have it and bring it with us for us to eat later on. Or we went to a Mexican restaurant, I didn't have any chips. So the next time, months down the road, when I'm feeling confident and comfortable, I will then exercise the self-control in actually having the food. But right now I wanted to focus on just saying no, because even that alone was very challenging. And I also know, and I'm honest with myself about the place that I am right now in my journey, knowing that if I had that food, it would be a lot harder to stop. So right now where I'm at, I have to meet myself where I'm at and right now, I'm okay with me just saying no because that in itself was a challenge. I'm gonna pull this baby out for this one. The next one, I did not emotionally eat at all. I have officially gone 60 full days, no emotional eating and no binging. And that is freaking huge. Now I would be able to say before that I've gone, I don't know how long I've gone. I've, I've gone a good bit without binging, but I was emotionally eating. So this is huge. If you guys see, there's a couple of hearts here. On these days, it was real hard. It was real hard to not turn to food. I have a, a, a video all about what I consider, I call my toolbox. And this is something that has been crucial, again, for me, when I have these days to know that I have myself set up for success. It's in a place where I know where it's at. And there's a video all about that. So if it's up, I will link it down below. But that has been really crucial too, is to have things to go to and uh, things. I'll, I will kind of tell you about what, what's been helping me when it comes to not emotionally eating. But I had three days this month. It was real hard and I made it through and I'm so proud of myself. So many, I mean, I just think about last year, I wasn't, I was not able to even go through a weekend. So when I got like my first weekend, I said to my nutritionist, I made it a weekend. It was my first weekend. I didn't eat, emotionally eat or binge. And then when I went my second weekend, now I'm like, weekends are not a thing because I made sure to set my weekends up in a way where I'm not going to be. I have plans every single weekend and that has been crucial too, but there's gonna be more about that in that video. But I did wanna show you this. I went 29 days, um, no emotional eating. And if you look at my calendar, I also went 31 days in J January. So if you combine the two, I have gone a full 60 days, no emotional eating. And I'm so incredibly proud of myself. This is the thing that I am the most proud of for sure. This is another thing that was really challenging when I started because I was like, I do not want to do this, but I have been a little financially challenged the past couple of months. And I was like, Ugh, we gotta start going into the grocery store to like buy our groceries. I was a lover of grocery store delivery. Like my best friend, every single week we were getting our groceries delivered. So this month I told myself, we have to stop using grocery delivery. 
and we have to go and get our own groceries. And on top of that, when we go get our own groceries, we have to park in the back of the parking lot. Back of the parking lot, girl, back of the parking lot. Another thing is when I was running errands, if there were if there were stores that were really close to each other, which in my mind, it's like, oh no, they're like too far away for me to even want to walk because mm -mm, I'm tired and I don't want to do that. I made myself walk from this store to this store and I didn't want to, but I did it. And I actually filmed that. That was one of the things I filmed for you guys that was filmed in slow-mo. But I was sitting there and I was debating because I really didn't want to do it. I was like, that store's there, that store's there. I could get here and go go in there and get back in my car and then drive over there. But I could also walk. When I actually did that, I felt so much better from just taking that short little, little walk. And really, at the end of the day, like... Well, I was looking at it, I was like, that's so far away, but it wasn't at all. It wasn't. This is another thing that was really crucial for me. I consumed weight loss success stories every single day. Every single day. Not a day went by that I did not listen to tips and tricks from someone who's been where I am and who has successfully lost 125 pounds and has kept it off for years. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. I consumed his podcast every single day. I also went on his YouTube channel. I was going on his membership, all of the things. I was consuming as much as I could because that was so inspirational for me. His name is Chris Terrell. If any of you guys want to get in on that, I freaking love him. He's so inspirational and he doesn't talk about, he doesn't care about how much you're losing or how much the scale says. I mean, obviously that's, that's important. We want to lose weight, but his thing is focusing on changing who you are as a person and who, and the inside, because if you do not fix what's going on in here and here, you will never be able to lose the weight and keep it off. You might be able to lose it. You might be able to go on a really long street because I'm, I'm speaking from experience. It has never worked for me to just go in full force and being like, all right, I'm doing this and not really change anything other than the physical things that I was changing. I wasn't changing anything in here. And I was trying to change up here and it got me every single time. And somehow I just figured out a way to just I think it was all the work that I did on myself last year was really being able to acknowledge when I'm talking bad about myself or when I'm being a bully to myself or when I'm having thoughts that are not serving me. Literally telling myself out loud, Jill, stop. That has been so incredibly helpful. So consuming those weight loss success stories, so crucial this month. Um, I average 7,000 steps every week this, this month. Um, this has helped me not to feel burnout because I felt like I had to just be go, 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 go all the freaking time. Some days I will do my workout and then I'll go to the gym with my son and I'll walk on the treadmill. Some days I don't have it in me. So my goal is 5,200 steps. If you take my average of what I got over the course of seven days, it was about seven to 7,500 steps. And I'm really, really happy with that. And each month, I'm going to make it a higher, like each, as I progress, I'm going to keep making that a higher and higher and higher goals. I did something that sucked almost every day to build my mental toughness in a doable and sustainable way. So week six of my weight loss journey has a full week of me showing you things that I did. So if you want to go check that out, I will link it down below. But this was something that I found to be really, really, really cool. And again, I'm not going to go too much into this. Week six is all about doing things that suck and like my, my mindset behind all of it. So I will link that video down below if you haven't caught it yet. This one was really good. So I wrote on February 12th, I woke up crying, fearful, fearful feeling dread and said, why even bother anymore? I'm not getting up. I'm not going to take the kids to school and I'm getting back into this bed. I was in that effort headspace. And if I would have done just that, it would have been a recipe for disaster. And that's what I told myself. I said, Jill, if you do this, it is going to be a recipe for disaster. So what do you want? You have, you have a choice. Do you want to do this or do you want to get up and try to function today? What, what do you want to do? Every single choice you make has consequences, whether it's positive or negative. And I knew that if I 
let myself stay in that effort mindset and this, you know, I don't care. I'm feeling, I'm crying. I'm sad. I'm fearful. I'm feeling dread. I don't want to get up. I don't want to function today. I don't want to adult today. I don't want to deal with any of it today. I just want to lay here and just boohoo and feel sorry for myself. If I had done that, I already know I would have binged. I know myself well enough that I would have binged. So I told myself, I had that conversation in my head. You have these choices. You can stay in bed all day, but you already know that's a recipe for disaster and you will binge. You know it. Or if you don't, it'll be really hard for you to not. So instead, I allowed myself to feel what I was feeling and I validated it. And then I told myself, I have a busy day and I need to get up and keep the promise I made to myself. I'm not going to allow my feelings to control me anymore. And I did just that. But if I didn't fight back and the negative mind space I was in and I allowed the effort mind space to take over, I would have 100% ate my emotions that day because I know me. And even if it wasn't that day, the next day was going to be the same with my headspace. And so I would have eventually eaten my emotions. This was my biggest success and something monumental as to why I was so successful this month. And if I keep doing this, it's why I will be successful in this weight loss journey. And I'm so glad that I'm also recognizing what I'm feeling. Now this day, I validated my feelings. I allowed myself to feel what I was feeling, but I also allowed myself to distract myself. I remember getting up and just going through the motions and just telling myself, this is just temporary. You're gonna get through this. Everything is gonna be okay. I'm so proud of you. Just being kind and gentle to myself. I didn't judge my feelings. I didn't judge myself and say, you shouldn't be feeling this way. Don't feel this way. And then stop trying to feel or try to figure out, oh my gosh, why am I feeling this way? Like I need it to stop. I need it to go away. No, I felt it and I was kind and I was gentle with myself. And that is so crucial in the self-love portion of a weight loss journey because again I don't talk about this much but if you do not have self-love and if you're not practicing self-love then this journey is going to be so much harder than it has to be because that is something that I'm learning to do too is love myself I'm spending a lot of time with myself if you guys don't know I'm making bingo cards each month and I'm doing things to get out of my comfort zone. I'm spending time with myself. I'm doing things that I was scared to do. I'm doing all of these things to bring me closer to the person that I want to be because I'm tired of being the person that I was and I can no longer continue to be that person. So if you guys wanna see more about these bingo cards, I will link the two that I already have up and you guys can go check those out. So that is going to do it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I am so incredibly proud of myself. The thing that I'm most proud of is this. And then also on February 12th, when I, I fought back, I also, another thing that I didn't mention, I kept a lot of promises that I made to myself. If I was like, oh, I don't wanna do that, or I don't wanna do that, I kept the promise I made to myself. I'd be like, Jill, you got a choice. You wanna do this or do you wanna do that? And you also promised yourself you would, so just go do it, it'll be fine, you'll get through it. And I did, it was amazing. I had a great month. It was a really, really, really great month and I'm so incredibly, incredibly proud of myself, so. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share it. Make sure you leave me a comment. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe. And don't forget about my channel membership. It'll be linked down below. You guys can learn more about it. Or right next to the subscribe button is the join button. You can click that and it'll tell you all about my channel membership. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.